Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick and welcome to the channel. Been a bit under the weather recently, which is why I haven't been around as much. So I'm going to dive in and talk about something that, that I'm really loving right now with Boris FX Optics. So we're going to use a particle illusion to create backgrounds, um, which is like one of the many, many features that are inside. I obviously love the lens flares, the light rendering for nice sky, things like this, light leaks. I, I do love this program. I use it on so many images, even subtly, that I don't always talk about using it. But it's been a part of nearly all of the images that I've processed of late. So let's dive into this image here. So this is uh, Natasha, and we are going to just create a little bit of background. Now, the original image of this, the background wasn't fully black, but I've kind of made it black and expanded it a little bit. And um, so I'm going to, first of all, duplicate this, and then I'm going to convert to smart object. So that way we can redo the settings at any point if we need. So let's open Boris FX. Now, when you open Boris FX, it will ask you, do you want to apply the filters that are previously applied, which is a great thing. So it means that if I did this as an ordinary file, instead of a, a smart object, I could undo what I've done inside Photoshop, reopen or convert to smart object, reopen uh, Boris and apply the effects. So that way I can get the smart object without losing the settings uh, that I had initially. But you can only do it straight away uh, when you're processing an image. I'm going to click no here because we we're going to do this manually. So as we last use uh, Particle Illusion, we can see that it's, that it's here. Now what I'm looking for is PI Background. Now I'm actually going to use this default background that's here, but I'm going to drag up here so you can have a better look at the presets. So you can see that there are tons of ideas for stuff that can be used for backgrounds, and these can all be modified as well. Even though they're called backgrounds, you could put them over. Um, I do actually like this set here, the Soft Light and the software HD2. These are like really, really cool. And you can change the size to make them fit better. So they would, that would make a cool background for something as well. But like I said, I do specifically want to use uh, this diagonal flare because I really like this diagonal flare. So let's go into particle properties to make some changes. Now, not everything in here affects every uh, particle illusion. So each particle properties, some of these things don't do anything like spin. If you go to spin, spin, uh, it's not as right as weight. Weight does nothing there, okay? Life makes a difference and also time will make a difference here as well. So let's have a look at time for a second. So we can see here that it's, it's like a video frame that we're seeing this go by. Okay. So let's come back here. And I want something where there isn't excessive flame. That's not bad. Okay. Now I'm going to go to size because I do want it to take up a little bit more. But size is also doing a little bit too much of zooming with the light aspect of it. So what we can come in to do is into world transform. We can do master scale. Master scale will bring the whole lot up. Okay, now we can just reposition a little bit. I'm going to go back in life to try and get a little bit less here, or in time rather. Okay, and then have a look at what life has given us as well, because life affects it too as well. Okay, that's less of what's happening over here. Um, and let us have a look at the seed as well. The seed will make a difference, massive difference. Okay, I prefer that one there. And let's change the size again on that. And then reposition it down a small bit. Okay, so I kind of like what's going on there. Let's see what the zoom has given us. Oh yeah, that's better. So we just fill in the frame a little bit more with that. Okay, I'm not worried about what's happening in the middle because what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that because it's a background, so it shouldn't be in the foreground. I can go to mask, click on the mask icon and choose easy mask. Very quickly, I'm going to just left click on the outside in the black area. This is where I want to keep. And rather than switching the tool, if I just go to right click, right click is automatically the area that we don't want to keep. So it saves you trying having to switch tools is a much faster workflow, basically. Okay, and I should be able to detect the edges because, there's, you know, this is dark and the edges are pretty obvious. So I click the, the, the cog icon to generate the mask. Okay, there we go. That's done a reasonable job here. Now, if I wanted, I could do a little bit more work to make it sit better over here, but that's fine. So I'm just going to click here. So I go back and I have the control for movement. Just do an accommodation of movement so that it looks its best with, with the masking edges. Now, if we want, we could come in here, we could refine it a little bit more here on the edge and say, I, I definitely want it here. And I definitely don't want it here and go again for just parts for it. Like there's, there's too much of a halo in that section there. And that's why I'm getting rid of that. And yeah, so I think that's pretty much going to do it. Even if uh, I'm not 100% happy, it's close enough for just showing how the process works. Click apply. 
and that will bring it back into Photoshop, uh, closing down optics in the process as well. And so we can see this becomes our background. Okay, there we go. All right. Now there's other stuff going on here where uh, I could potentially go back and I could create this just as its own layer and come in and, and then use the easy mask and stuff like that. That's just nice to, to get us started with there as well. And the thing is, I, I, don't, I didn't intentionally use the opacity inside optics itself because I know that I could actually change the opacity here as well, which can help a little bit with that blend. So folks, that's a little bit look at creating backgrounds using optics. Hopefully you found that useful. There is a discount code, um, so do check out the discount code as well if you're interested in getting optics. I love it for so much stuff. It's absolutely my favorite plugin. Thanks for watching.